book. Here we go. <laughs> How's it going, Michael? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> Good. Glad you're celebrating that you just got your window opened in time. <laughs> just in time. It's kind of the, the thing every time is can oh, it's not quite working yet. Yeah. Now it's going. There's this is what I don't get is like how every time we're like last minute, shoot, we've got to open that or that. So because there's too many things, too many yeah. buttons, too many places. True. There you go. So how was how was your weekend? I've had better weekends. Yeah. <laughs> how about you? <laughs> Well, I have to say, I did, someone is going to like congratulate me on this, but my feet were on the floor at 6.36 this morning. So the alarm well, started I will going, be the first to congratulate you. Thank you. Yeah, the alarm started going off at 6.15 and I gave myself two minute increments to sleep. So <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but 6.36, so that was good. And I was on the computer returning emails at 7 a.m. So there you go. So this is progress. A 7 a.m. start time. Okay, so what did you do for those 25 minutes between feet on the ground and getting to computer. I, just had, start your day. I had my isogenics little isotonics or whatever it's called um, thing. I made myself some decaf coffee. I played decaf. with side. Yeah, I don't, I can't have caffeine because I feel like a crazy person when I have it now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Crazier. I just feel like a crazy person every day. <laughs> Let's be yeah. serious. No, but it's like night and day when I actually have caffeine, I'm like about stuff. And if I don't have it, my mood is like so much more level. So there's something in it that really isn't agreeing with my system. So I'm avoiding it. So that was, I had that. And then I pondered whether I should go for a walk. And then I remembered that there's been so many bob bobcat photos taken on people's like security cameras in my area. So I decided maybe going for a walk by myself at that time in the morning was not a good idea. So Lisa, how big are the bobcats in your area? I'm curious about this. I don't know. At first I thought people were just like high on something and were mistaking a large cat for a bobcat, but I've seen the photos and you can see like the hair coming off their ears. Like they're for realsies bobcats. So, but are they like are the size of a house cat? Are they quite a oh, bit larger? Oh, no, they're bigger. They'd probably be like above my knee. So okay. they're, they're not like a lion, but they're baby tiger. Baby tiger, yeah, dangerous. In your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> in our backyard. Yeah, they're like wandering the alleyways and going up to people's front porches and stuff. So it's uh, yeah, a little bit disconcerting. Okay, so I have another question for you. This yeah. morning you got your butt out of bed, boots on the ground, 6.30. Yeah, What did you do different? Sorry, 6.36, I, I can't 636. give you those extra six minutes. <laughs> I'm still what feeling bad different? about my six minutes. So since today's Tired Ass Tuesday, oh, yeah. and so much of, of Tired Ass Tuesday is having a certain rhythm and a pattern that's going to support the kind of lives we want. What did you do different so that you could get out of bed this morning at 636? Not 636, 36. I told myself I had to report to you that I did not hit snooze until 730. So that was my motivating factor was having to report back to you. Okay. So you'd rather... So we, we talked about Satan before. That mean that you've made me Satan in all of this now? <laughs> You're totally Satan. <laughs> I guess with the glove fits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I had to, I just, uh, well, it's funny. One of the people who said she was going to message me at 6.30 in the morning, the next day after I admitted that I did not get out of bed, she messaged me on Sunday at 8.30 and I actually turned my alarm off and let myself just wake up naturally. And I woke up at 11 on Sunday. So I, uh, she still owes me a 6.30 a.m. text message, but at least I did it today. So now we've got over the hump for one of them. Now we can hopefully get over the hump every day this week, and I'll have good reports every day. Yeah, I think I think the fact that you let yourself sleep in really long on Sunday is part of the reason you're able to get up earlier. Maybe. Um, you know, part of rhythms, and, every, and this is what I do with my kids all the time, is that I still have my kids getting out of bed normal 7.30 time that we would have for school, mm -hmm. even right now that there is no school. I've told them pretty clearly. You still have work you got to do. We still got to get up at some point in time. Life will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, but come the weekends, I still let them do all the stuff they would have done on weekends before they're up. But, you know, they sleep in as long as they want. And then usually they jump immediately onto computer games. Because, <laughs> again, we're not allowed to do that during the regular school days. But on weekends, I let it, we, we go relax. They can stay up later. They can wake up later. They can play around more. Uh, so you did the same thing as my kids, where you just relaxed more on a weekend. You have, if you're going to push yourself to that can schedule, you're like, I got to do this, got to do this. You mm -hmm. have to bed for as long as I want. Yeah, it's true. So that may have been part of it, but I also think that 
feeling like I had to report to you was a bigger factor. Even though last week I still had to report to you and I still failed, but this today was off to a better start. So, so making me see was the real trick. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. So we want to talk about sleep today. So what do yeah. you want to talk about specifically with sleep? Because there's lots of different aspects. Obviously, the getting up in oh morning and schedule was kind of our theme last week. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's the starting point. I guess today, I think some things we can talk about today are a few things that interrupt normal sleep mm -hmm. so that when you're asleep, uh, your sleep quality becomes less. Mm -hmm. And then when you wake up in the morning, you feel exhausted. And you want to hit your snooze. Was it 20 times? Sometimes more. Yeah. <clears throat> or 30 or 40 or snooze for an hour and a half or, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Pardon me. So yeah, there are things that we can do or things that we do do that will interrupt. So that even when we get to sleep, we feel like garbage in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first ones, and this is happening an awful lot. Like, have you, have you been reading any of the stuff, the story, new stories have been coming out on liquor sales the last little while? No, I would imagine they're up from where they sh normally would be. Like crazy. There's some places that are reporting like 150% increase in liquor sales. Wow. It's actually, I'm not surprised. It's I'm not either, not actually. Healthy, but the, the liquor store owners are all saying that the only time they see sales like this is around Christmas time. Hmm. You know, when everybody's coming over and everybody's having some drinks and having a good time, that's what people are drinking like right now. Like it's the biggest ass holiday of their lives. Wow. <laughs> Except they just keep going and going all the time. Yeah. And I imagine that's due to stress. It's due to not having to be at work in the morning. So exactly. Mm, yeah. And so we're all stressed. And so you look for a little, like you take the edge off with a nice scotch or a glass of wine. And then what ends up happening is besides the fact that it's unhealthy because alcohol, and everything else, um, it starts to interrupt our sleep, especially at nighttime when we're like, we can't fall asleep. So it's all, oh, let's just have a quick glass of a glass of wine, mm -hmm. um, have that, you know, shot of brandy or whatever it is we're going to have you know even how many times i don't know if you heard this about little kids but the parents who try to get colicky kids to bed by giving that little bit of whiskey oh yeah or mothers that will have a couple of shots so that it comes through their breast milk right yeah this is this is very normal stuff it's survival handbook with little kids <laughs> i've been there i know <laughs> yeah um but uh, what ends up happening when we sleep is that when we have even just a little bit of alcohol on board is that our airways become way more collapsible and we have way more obstruction. So even if you don't have sleep apnea, you'll have something like sleep apnea or maybe an upper airway resistance syndrome. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the oxygen that gets into your body um, and you don't get to the full depths of sleep. So memory, sleep is important for two reasons. One is it's memory consolidation, basically that you can make memories and learn from what happened today. Otherwise, you know, when you burnt your hand on the stove, you forget that you did it and you go do it again tomorrow. Right. Um, and then the second thing is re rest and repair of the body because wear and tear of happening during the day has to find some point in time for your body to recover from it. Mm -hmm. If we don't get the proper amount of sleep, we don't get the recovery. And then we feel exhausted, worn out and tired mm -hmm. again the next day. So this builds on what we were talking with Dr. Lindsay on Friday about cortisol levels and we don't get the sleep, the cortisol goes up and then we end up that whole cascade of problems that she was talking with us about. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, like, I know when I've had problems getting to sleep, if I'm like, severely stressed or whatever, it seems like a good idea to have alcohol. And then the next day, I'm not as smart. So like, that was part of it. <laughs> yeah, shocking that that could happen. Um, but with the six month challenge with the level up with Anne's challenge, part of my commitment was to not have alcohol, right. And there's been the odd time where I'm like, Oh, I'm just gonna have a glass during the challenge mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. seriously feel it so differently the next day. And it seems like it'll help you to like relax and go to sleep and all that. But I find it actually does the opposite. So it, I don't sleep as well. I don't get to sleep as fast. Um, and it's really, really frustrating. So you find that when you take alcohol that you stay awake longer as well? Yeah, I'll, I'll feel like I calm down a bit and then I get yeah. hyper kind of once it starts wearing off. So I don't know if oh, I just bounce okay. back to like being the Energizer Bunny or what. Because I find for me that it will help me fall asleep, but Ooh. that my sleep, the quality of my sleep is garbage and I wake up feeling like I didn't sleep at all. Even though I fell asleep, mm -hmm. it just doesn't help for me at least. Yeah. I've never had that like I drink alcohol and I get excited and wired. Oh, I, well, I think what it, it like mutes the, the noise in my head and then suddenly there's like this clarity and excitement that comes out maybe. I don't know, but definitely feel much better without it on board. So getting rid of the alcohol and the caffeine, huge difference. How long have you been doing that for now? How far into your challenge? 
Uh, we are four weeks out now. Wow. It, it goes until my 40th birthday. Wow. So you are four weeks in or you have four weeks remaining? No, you have four weeks four, remaining. Four weeks remaining of a six month challenge. Okay. So you're five months deep. Yeah. How many people do you have doing this challenge with you? I think there's about 10 across the different platforms. Like there was lots that started and then they quit responding to the challenge. Yeah. Um, Cause it's hard. Right. And the thing is they don't have to do the same thing as me. They were just supposed to be picking something to help themselves level up. Okay. And so whatever that was, whether it was like their professional life, their yeah. emotional life, whatever it was, they just had to pick those things and stick to it. So you've been in this now for a while. So you can speak from personal experience, this whole thing of, of, Oh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of wired. I'm kind of bothered by something. I want to go to sleep. I want to have a little drink to relax. Mm -hmm. Your personal experience has found it doesn't work. What have you been doing instead? to help get you to wind down and relax. Cause if some people really can't sleep, they're going to go and ask um, what's going on. What can I do instead? I need an alternative. Otherwise they're still going to default back to what was not working. Mm -hmm. For me, honestly, that exercise to burn off the day yeah. at the end of the night is what helps me. So on the days where I'm like, Oh, I'm too tired to hop on the bike or do kickboxing or whatever. Then yeah. I lay in bed and my eyes are wide open and I can't fall asleep. So it, even if I feel like I'm too tired to do it, if I hop on the bicycle and still burn that through and it lets me process everything that's happening in my brain, yeah. then I tend to do better for sleeping. Do you have a certain time you like to work out? Like do you work out and burn it all off on the bike right before you go to bed? Or do you do it sometime early in the day and you have to give yourself a certain window of gap of time? No, I do better with burning it off at the, like right before bed. Okay, because I find for me, if I work out right before bed, a lot of times I'm wired. Mm -hmm. It's like my heart rate gets up and my body's like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Yeah. And yeah, then I'm lying in bed. I'm like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> yeah. I, quality would be better, but I lie in bed for a long time. Well, I think probably it has to do with like the competition season too. So you know that you compete late at night and then you'd be able to crash and go to bed right after. So right. I think my body got trained to like have that, that spike of happiness and adrenaline and endorphins. And then it goes whoosh, right off to sleep. The spike means sleepy time for you now. Yeah, exactly. I've I've wrecked like myself. My fancy mug. What does it say? It's got nothing. It just looks nice. It's tea. Is it like gold foil? Uh, pretend gold foil, probably. Yeah. Throw it in a microwave and see what happens. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, your children are not, not watching. Green tea. Green tea. Good for the auto. Or good for the immune system. Well, with mm -hmm. everything that's going on. For sure. So I think we should explain to people why the sleep apnea stuff happens. Cause I think, you yeah. know, if you're, if you can breathe fine during the day, sometimes it doesn't make sense as to why you can't breathe fine at night. And there's some yeah. people they're not breathing fine at either time. So it makes sense that they're having issues, but yeah. you know, like someone who is teeny like me, who has like a teeny little neck, you would think someone like me would be able to breathe fine at night, you know, and not yeah. have a collapsible airway. But yeah. when I've done the, like we used to do sleep apnea in my practice, I could blow, I could blow hard enough that I could collapse my airway down to like a quarter of the diameter of a spot of a straw. So almost completely shut. Right. Mm -hmm. So for someone like me, it's not going to be a weight issue. It's going to be more of a genetics and the makeup of my airway that is going to cause me to have sleep apnea. And my parents suffer from it. So I'm yeah. going to be heading down that pathway myself too. But for a normal person, let's explain the process of why they actually need to be aware of the alcohol part of it and also what causes the, the collapsing. Yeah, well, you're getting to that heart of it is it's about the airway. The term when you look in the science is called airway collapsibility. And there's a pressure point that your airway can only maintain to certain pressure and then it boom, and it collapses down like a balloon. Right. Um, so that's critical pressure. I mean, it sounds so we're using all these terms, but that's the actual term. For everybody, it really comes down to how strong are your muscles that surround the airway and that is different for each individual person. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you have inflammation in the airway, it becomes more collapsible. If you have a small airway because you're overweight, it becomes more collapsible because there's less space inside of there. But then there's also the muscles that sit around and support the tissue or the, all of the airway as well too. So some of that mm -hmm. can be just what's the strength of your muscles. If you're in better shape in theory, then your muscles should be stronger. So you're gonna be able to maintain your airway better. Mm -hmm. um, but the other part of it too is it's a central nervous system part. It's how does the wiring between your brain and the muscles that sit somewhere in your throat that hold everything open, how well do they work? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, you, a matter of them, the neurons firing properly to do correct. their job. Am I unfrozen? You're unfrozen. I have a new router, a brand new router, and I'm still freezing. 
I upgraded they, they, everything I possibly could to the highest level of internet I could at home. And yep, you got still, sucked in. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's changed at all. <laughs> well, no, well, you've only frozen twice in 15 minutes, so we're we are making kind of progress. Maybe I've only said two important things. <laughs> that could very well be as well. <laughs> um. Oh. Yeah, so there's the part of how is your brain functioning? Is it able to initiate the signals? And then how is your brain able to get all of the different measurements that's happening around your body? And then how well do the muscles respond to the signals they're getting? So at any one of those different points, you could have a breakdown in the way that your nerves are functioning to maintain and keep your airway open. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, some of that can be called loop gain. Some of it's called central sleep apneas. Some of them can simply be about the muscle responsiveness. So the, or the place where alcohol comes back in mm -hmm. is you do a lot of exercise. You work out an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone out with friends for, you know, happy hour and then gone and tried to work out three or four hours later? Yes. And how did it feel? Better than if I didn't work out. Right. But compared to a normal workout, how did you feel while you were working out? Sluggish. For right. Sure really sluggish did you have the same amount of strength that you would normally if you're trying to do some lifts you're trying to do some power workouts some, no i would say everything stuff. was like yeah not firing wasn't firing on all cylinders right and when we're sleeping the same thing is happening because that alcohol whether we're working out or whether we're asleep we still have that same kind of energy source that's in our body mm -hmm. and if it's an energy source that causes our muscles they just don't have the strength that they're normally used to then everything becomes weak just like if you're trying to lift weight if you can normally lift 20 pounds you're probably only able to lift 15 pounds Right. The same kind of thing is if your muscle can maintain a certain amount of patency to X, it'll be X minus, say, 20% or 30% or whatever the extra background factors each person has. Right. But whatever it is, it'll be less than normal because now that alcohol is making your muscles weaker. We all feel like the kind of, you, you watch somebody stumble home after when they've had a few too many, it's because their muscles are weak and they can't maintain the coordination anymore. Yeah. For me, I have a glass of wine problem. and my head is like... Can't keep my head on my neck, so. <laughs> Do you become the swift, like the bobblehead when you start drinking? No, I'll just, like, it keeps happening that my head falls backwards. It's really weird. And, like, one glass of wine, and I look like it, uh, it looks really bad. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm a narcoleptic. Like, it's <laughs> totally. Yeah, this is why, like, yeah. If I, if I have two glasses of wine, I'm in real trouble. So. So there, does that answer the question or is there more that you're looking for? No, that does answer the question. So that's part of the collapsibility. So now yeah. someone is dealing with being overweight. Yeah. So the minute they lay back, there's more mass on their neck as well. So that's part of the reason they're going to have more collapsibility. So like the classic person who you would say, oh, they probably have sleep apnea when they walk into your office yeah. is a very different thing than like a, a thin, lean person who ha is symptomatic, but doesn't look like they should be symptomatic. Yeah, that's part of it. Um, there's two extra elements that we'll like at least speak to, and we won't. One of them will go into depth, and one we won't. Okay. One of them is um, it also depends on which areas of the throat are having problems, which muscle groups aren't being recruited properly, mm -hmm. has a big a big uh, deciding factor in whether you're going to have symptoms or not. Um, and so inside of sleep, and I know you've spoken a lot with Shresh Chirkande in the past. Mm -hmm. This is the idea of who are the responders and the non-responders. Um, so that's one piece of the puzzle. Another piece of the puzzle too is that um, inflammation and how being overweight influences the entire inflammatory profile. Mm -hmm. It's really the, the, the adipose tissue, the tissues in the body that store the fat are um, they're part of your endocrine system. They're part of the system of the body that creates all of the hormones that influence how we feel and how our body regulates itself. Uh, the way that it works is it's really, it, it's truly fair to think of being obese and being overweight as, um, as an inflammatory condition because everything that works with the adipose tissue is using the same kind of inflammatory me messengers as your in immune system would. So in a truly an immune way of looking at things, um, to be overweight is the equivalent of being allergic to your own body. Right. Meaning if you have higher levels of inflammation, again, let's think it back to our exercise example. Um, if you are really sick or you middle of having a lot of allergies as we're coming into that season and you're feeling kind of under the weather, are you going to be able to have as much power for endurance if you're going for uh, say, you know, endurance training or as much strength if you're doing strength training um, when you're feeling sick and under the weather? Right. And then the answer, of course, is no, we just don't feel that same strength in us when we have inflammation in our bodies. And the reason why is because the, when we're inflamed, the body is trying to send as much energy as it can to our immune system. 
and it's only giving us the base amount of energy so we can move our bodies around, but not as much because the energy has to go somewhere else. So it purposely weakens the body. If you're purposely weakening the muscles that are sitting around your throat because you're overweight and you have a higher level of, of inflammation in your body, you're going to be weakening it the same kind of way that you'd be weakening if you were having alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's two factors, smaller airway plus more inflammation and more weaker muscles. Mm -hmm. Now, if the snow finally goes away and we have spring come to stay, if that totally rhymed. <laughs> this, um, is this is Canada, <laughs> yeah, the spring has been really weird, but uh, when people have more seasonal allergies and they're more stuffy because of it, yeah. they have more inflammation in their body as well. So do we, we see, obviously people have a rise and fall with their sleep apnea as well. If they're more um, congested, correct? Correct. Uh, at times of, of, of more stuff in the air, you'll find that there's going to be higher amounts of sleep problems. My son right now, He's eight years old, chronic allergic rhinitis, which means his nose is always plugged mm -hmm. and it always gets worse at this time of year for him. So I've got him on nose sprays to help him to sleep better at night. Mm -hmm. But that's something to do in combination with your doctor, with your physician. Mm -hmm. Or talk to your dentist when you're allowed to see your dentist again and they will help direct you in the right direction. Yes. When will that be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I miss my patients. I'll tell you that. Like yeah, it's strange I've not seeing them. Well, we had, I don't know if you saw the broadcast on Saturday, but I had uh, Jason Wilkins on, the lawyer, who yep. helps us with employment law stuff. And they just extended the layoff from 60 days to 120 days. Yeah. So that that might be an indication of when people are going to get back to seeing patients. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we got that other stuff. I, I should have been on that call. I wasn't on that one where they're talking about all the different, uh, the government level, um, paying through, uh, and I haven't figured out how all that works yet either. Mm -hmm. I've been in almost daily conversation with my accountant trying to figure this out and it still isn't very clear yet. Okay. I can talk to you a little bit about that behind the scenes. My accountant has okay. like created a beautiful streamlined thing for me. So. Ooh. Okay. We'll talk. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like I should have been on your other evening show as well. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a little screw in there. <laughs> You can fix that. There's lots coming forward. So um, anyway, so one thing we were talking about before we actually got onto the broadcast was like, yeah, with everything that's happening in our world, we're starting to, I feel like people are starting to get clarity on what is important, what's not important, um, relationships that they want to keep, relationships that they don't, whether it's like professional or personal or whatever. Um, what are you starting to see change for yourself now that we're, we're now into week four officially? Or week um, five. My, we just finished week four, so we're starting week five. Are we really into week five already? Yeah, it was uh, March seventeenth, which was a Tuesday. So that's true. We are exactly four weeks in now. Yep, crazy, hey? So much has transpired Holy since cow. then. Wow. Just let that sink in for a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm finding my kids are getting on my nerves more and more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding that my youngest son is getting more and more bored, and Bored is his word for what I call grumpy as all hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this little guy, he gets bored. He comes, he wants me to tell him what to do. Right. And then if I can't say do this and this and this in a way that he's excited, in other words, he's wanting me to give him permission to play video games. <laughs> then he just goes around and starts kicking things. And so I'll send him outside and he'll just sit there and kick the railing. So we all hear this dong, 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 <laughs> dong, dong in the house for half an hour straight. And his brother will come to me like, dad, Please make him stop. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, no. So, yes, it's one thing to know what we want. Like, we know we love our kids, and we know we want to be around our kids most days. Yeah. Um, but I think everybody's finding the, the small things are becoming bigger than they were because we can't really get away from people. And then the people who are living on their own, who, you know, I, I'm envious of you. You're probably feeling envious of me because you've got nobody to talk to. I would like someone to hug. Honestly, that's like my biggest thing. I'm like, I haven't hugged someone in over four weeks. And physical touch is a huge part of who we are as people. And, yeah. You know, we've, we've always been in tribes and families and groups where their touch is always a part of what we do. You look at a locker room of even a bunch of guys who play sports, yeah. where they're always, always hitting each other and high-fiving and jostling around. It's, it's dude touch, but it's still touch. And it's something in, like you see girls and they just get together and hug. Yeah. Guys kind of hit each other, <laughs> yeah. but it's still touch, right? It's still a part of who we are as people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think all of us, whether you live alone, 
the inability to get away and find a little bit of your own personal space. But if mm -hmm. you're living on your own, you're feeling I'm lonely and I want to feel that there's somebody around me again. Yep. And so it's causing pressure on both sides. For sure. Yeah, there's ones who want, want to escape and those who want to be captured. <laughs> 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 but you know, the funny thing is, is that it's, it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or extrovert. If you're an introvert living on your own, usually you love being alone, but now you're like, I want people around. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're an extrovert stuck with people at home that you don't really always want to be around, you want, you're looking for some place of isolation and being by yourself. Yes, for sure. I'm sure like once it gets warmer, well, if this is going to last like another 60 days, people are going to be definitely working outside and we'll be able to spread out a little bit more. Um, I'm honestly just so thankful this didn't happen at the beginning of winter where yeah. everyone was like super cooped up because I think people would be losing their minds a lot faster. But like I live on the park. So when I look outside, I can see yeah. people going in another park and the foot traffic has increased significantly. So one of the good things about all this is that people are getting more exercise, probably getting more fresh air than they normally would because they need to yeah. get away from people. So. <laughs> It's true. And it's good to take those times. Like that's one of the ways when you live with people, you can seek a little bit of solitude is by getting out and moving around by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had the same thing yesterday. My kids were driving me bananas all weekend long. It really, it got to them and then in turn got to me. So I took mm -hmm. like a nice long hour and a half walk yesterday. Nice. Um, the fresh air feels so good. Being outside right now feels like living inside of a giant ventilator. <laughs> fair right and so we're all thinking about airflow with people who do contract the the coronavirus mm -hmm. well it's kind of the it's like nature's ventilator if you get outside and you just get that fresh air it feels so good and clear mm -hmm. yeah one of my tenant next door she and i go walking a couple of times a week but she we walked and i'm looking at the park benches and the picnic tables that are they built for canada 150 and i'm wondering like are we going to be allowed to sit on the grass in the summer because I'm sure that will keep virus attached to it. We're probably not going to be able to sit on the benches without a barrier between the bench and us and all that. So it's, I'm curious what the regulations are going to be moving forward with that. Um, the sunlight helps to break down a lot of the uh, virus as well. Mm -hmm. So it'll That'll be interesting be to see how this all rolls out over the over the summer. Yeah. Well, they've done research on like other surfaces, but they're not like natural surfaces. So. I'm sure we'll get some information on that, but it should be interesting to see. Yep. And we'll have to spread ourselves out at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Social distancing sunbathing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it should be interesting. So anyway, um, is there anything else you want to add today before we head out? Um, I mean, it's a whole other conversation, but at least put a little tidbit in there about blue, like blue screens in terms of how it, it gets in the way of causing problems for sleep. So mm -hmm. are you working on your computer right until you go to bed? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and you're not the only one. Yeah. Um, by f we're all doing it. And if you're not working on your, on your computer, we're sitting in front of the TV watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. And if we're not sitting in front of the TV watching Netflix, you're lying in your bed holding your phone, trolling Facebook or Instagram right. or Pinterest or TikTok, or whatever other million social media or, or Snapchat or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're doing it for, for, because we still want that sense of connection. So we're going to whatever channels are still available to us. But when we're on our phone at nighttime, and we talked about this already a little bit last week, that blue light really interferes our ability to sleep. So alcohol and screen time right before bed, okay. uh, stay away from them. Those are the two biggest things. And get up on time in the morning. It, you know what? If you want to get up on time in the morning, uh, good luck trying to get up on time in the morning if you're having a drink before you go to bed and trolling Facebook before you sleep. True. We have a way of like nicely condensing everything we've meandered around half an hour into about three sentences right at the very end of these things. Good job, us. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, it was lovely seeing you as usual. So tomorrow will be... Whip your butt to whip your butt Wednesday or whip your ass Wednesday. So whip your ass Wednesday, yeah. Yes. So what kind of crazy stuff are you gonna have us going with tomorrow for fitness? I think you we get should a little do sneak it. peek, you get a teaser. Yeah, I think we should do a dance lesson. So I'm gonna teach people oh, how to do some Latin. Yeah, I know. That's totally the reaction I wanted. So <laughs> we're gonna make you uncomfortable and I'm gonna have fun. So Well, I need a dance partner for tomorrow. No, you, well, you, no, it'll be fine. I'll make you do solo stuff. 
So I think I think we should bring Garrett on too and make him dance with us. <laughs> <laughs> See if he's game for that. We can add another level to his fitness stuff. Oh my goodness. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Put it past him and see if he'll join us, but it'll be fun. Even if he doesn't join next week, we'll have to get him to join again sometime in the future. Yes, absolutely. So tomorrow is going to be do-it-yourself dance. Do-it-yourself dance lessons, yep. Okay. With Angela Mulroney. <laughs> <laughs> Will you show us a few moves that we can practice regularly so that when we all come out of this, we can oh, yeah. all salsa like crazy or something? Yes, for sure. All right. Okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, my friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye.